Hey guys, here today showing you how to replace a throttle position sensor on a 2001 GMC Yukon XL. Uh, this is a 2500, so three quarter ton chassis. Um, it has the six liter engine, which is the LQ4. Um, this should be uh, applicable to 2000 through 2006 as uh, all the 2500 Yukons, Suburban 2500s, uh, GMC Sierras, uh, Chevy Silverados, Chevy Avalanches, etc. Pretty much all the trucks from 2000 through 2006 would have came with this engine if you did have the three quarter ton. Um, the throttle position sensor on this particular motor um, is located right kind of behind the alternator, pretty much right underneath the IAC valve. This is the idle air control valve. Directly below that, right kind of where I'm pointing at, it's it's a dark sensor, you can't really see it, but it's right there where I'm pointing. It's held on by a couple of torque screws. Um, you may be able to get in here with a very small uh, ratchet and Torx, but honestly, you probably will uh, lose your mind trying to do it that way. So the correct way to get to that would be to loosen up this uh, serpentine belt and uh, loosen this bolt on the alternator and the other bolt on the other side. Actually remove this one completely and loosen this one. That way you can pretty much swing the alternator this way out of the way so you have plenty of room to work. Um, also, you can take off, I'm gonna take off the air intake tube because it's easier to get to the belt tensioner. Um, you can probably try and get to the belt tensioner as it sits up underneath this, but it's really, really easy to take off this intake tube. It's just an eight millimeter bolt there and an eight millimeter bolt on the other clamp over there. So um, yeah, you'll need eight millimeter for sure. Uh, a torque set. I think that that size is T25, but I am not sure until I get there. But the reason I am replacing this, um, as you guys might see here, I had a, well, this code could come up for two reasons pretty much. Um, the first reason it would come on is if you do have a check engine light and it is showing the code, which is, um, let me see if you can see there, P0122, throttle position, pedal position sensor. Um, now if you had this car and your car had a electronic throttle, which some of these would have came with an electronic throttle, some of these would have came with the traditional uh, cable like mine has here, you can see there's cables that are attached here, so when, when you press the pedal, it just operates this directly. Um, some of these trucks do come with electronic throttles. In the case of your throttle position sensor, you actually need to be inside the car replacing the whole pedal assembly as it has a sensor attached to it. But for the guys who have a cable like mine, um, you'll, your throttle position sensor is right here on the side. So that it only applies to this. All the guys that have electronic throttle, shut the hood, go inside and get a pedal and replace the pedal. So yeah, as I was saying before, this code could come on and you know the, the sensor could have failed entirely and the uh, check engine light would be on solid and you would have this code which is uh, P0122. Now in the case of my car, or truck, um, it's a pending code, meaning it's not stored yet, it's not lit up on the dash, and if you didn't have a scanner, you would have no idea. Um, I would t like to tell you guys now that if your transmission started shifting harsh in every gear, first through fourth, shifting hard, when it was you know shifting perfectly fine before, and then one day you went in it and it started shifting really hard, um, no matter where you positioned your pedal, full throttle, part throttle, it's hard shifting. Um, I would I would first replace the throttle position sensor because that's usually the cause. Um, so yeah, in the case of my car, it shift my transmission shifting hard, and I know I don't have a transmission problem, um, and that's why this code is pending. So um, when I did go and, and do some more diagnosis, I did find that this throttle position sensor was going bad. So yeah, um, this is a pretty common problem for most all. Uh, the GMC and Chevy trucks from 2000 through 2006. Um, in the in the body style after that, they they, they kind of fix this issue. But um, 
by all means if your transmission this is really common for people having problems with their transmissions shifting really harsh all of a sudden out of nowhere so um, definitely look into replacing the sensor first before um, you do anything else um, it is advisable to hook up a scanner that's capable of live data if you can do that that I mean you're a step ahead of the game you can uh, actually see what the values your throttle position sensor is giving um, while you're driving in the case of this car um, even at idle it said I had 33% throttle position which obviously isn't true at idle it should be you know very close to zero so um, yeah I'm gonna go on ahead and show you how to uh, get to that sensor now okay just so you guys know this is what the throttle position sensor will look like small little guy here um, it only goes on one direction as you can see there's it's not completely round in there or maybe you can't see it but yeah this is what it looks like and the part number I have um, is just from my local O'Reilly's place I don't know if that'll focus on that but it's a master pro the number is 2-99037 so first thing you want to do is to remove this air intake tube um, it's held on by two eight millimeter screws that hold these clamps there's one right here and then there's another one right here on the air box um, you don't need to take off the mass airflow sensor of this deal you don't need to disconnect any of that you can just disconnect it right here at this clamp and right here at this other clamp additionally right here there will be some coolant hoses attached to the clips if you'll look there is a clip that's holding the hose when you go to take this out you can just take the whole clamp is just pressed into this plastic just just push it out with the screwdriver or get it out however you can so i'll go ahead and take this off now Okay, then you can go on ahead and take a screwdriver and come in here and, and just pry this off of here, just so you can get it off. And then you just lift this up and then kind of just lift this up and off of the uh, throttle body, just like so. This is the clip I was talking to you about here. Uh, mine is already broken, but when you do go take this off, you can actually just push this out that way you don't have to disconnect the, the clamp that's holding the coolant hoses and you just set this down to the side um, the next thing you want to do is to remove the engine cover which is held on also by one eight millimeter bolt right in the middle here you can just lift this cover up and pull it towards you and it'll come right off Okay, now that we've got the air intake tube off, you can see that that's opened up a lot of space to work. Um, the next thing we want to do is to loosen up the uh, belt tensioner so we can get this belt off of the alternator. Excuse me if my camera angle is not very good. Um, the tensioner is located right here directly under this radiator hose right here. I don't know if you could see my socket that's right here on, on, on the pulley itself. Um, it's a 15 millimeter bolt. If you have a breaker bar, that's the best thing to use. If you don't have one, you know, I guess you can get to it however you can get to it. Um, but pretty much you'll need to be uh, pushing towards your right or in, yeah, pushing down towards your right and that'll loosen up the tensioner. You can probably see there in the uh, camera. And that way you can just take the belt. You, you don't need to take it off everything. You can just slip it off the top of the alternator here because that's all we need to work on. And then you can just let it hang down to the side. Um, do take a picture if you need to in case your belt does come all the way off and uh, you forget how to put it on but um yeah so now that that's off you can go on ahead and as i mentioned before this particular procedure is only going to work for the throttle bodies that have a cable a cable actuated uh, throttle plate not the electronic one so do make sure you're paying attention to that Okay, after you got the belt loosened up, the next thing you want to do is to disconnect the connector that's on top of the alternator. It's just held on by this little clip here. Um, you just kind of, you can use a screwdriver or your finger to just pull this back and pull up on the connector. Um, now the goal for us to do here with this alternator is to pretty much take it and swing it up over to, you know, to the right as we're looking at it. 
Um, it's held on by two 15 millimeter bolts. This one right here you can see. There's another one on the other side that you probably can't see in the camera, but it, it looks exactly just like this one. Um, the, left one over, the left one over here that you can't see, that's the one that you need to loosen and take out completely. This one right here we can just loosen. That way we can just swing the uh, alternator up and out of the way. And uh, that'll give us the access we need to get to the throttle position sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen those up now. It is a 15 millimeter bolt. Of course you can use a ratchet if you want. I just had this breaker bar and that's all I need to do. So. After you break them free, they usually just come loose by hand anyway. So this is the one that came out of that side. And then now you may need to use a screwdriver or something to um, to help you pry this up out of, out of its hole. But um, we need to just flip it up out of the way so that we can get access to the throttle position sensor. As you can see, I lifted it up like that. And we'll just take this and just swing it down. Don't worry about the other cable that's going to the, uh, the red battery box. Um, you can just leave it sitting just like this and now we can focus on taking out the throttle position sensor. Okay, now we'll be looking at the, the uh, this is the idle air control valve. We need to go on ahead and disconnect the sensor. Uh, just disconnect, I like to disconnect it just so it's out of the way. Same type as the alternator one, just pick off this uh, clip and then just set it up to the side. And then you can disconnect. Mine is looking, this one is really dirty. It's got a lot of oil around the connector and whatnot, but it's the same type of clip. You just pick it up and pull it off and uh, just set it down to the side. Do be careful with these wires because they're probably really hot and brittle by now. So um, now what you want to do is to take a T20 Torx and loosen up both the screws that are on here and pull the uh, throttle position sensor off. And this is the uh, old nasty one. Like I said, it's it's got a lot of oil buildup on it. But as you can see inside here, it's nice and clean inside there. Um, if you take a notice at the shaft that comes out, it is in the shape of a D, so you can only put the throttle position for sensor. You can only put the sensor back on in one direction, so don't worry about having to um, adjust it or clock it a certain direction because it only goes on one way. So um, if you want, you can clean up around the area. Honestly, I'm not going to touch any of it because it, it's good enough and clean to where it came out of. Plus, these things have a, the blue part is actually a gasket to stop oil from getting out. So pretty much just take your one that you had and um, your new one and just pop it back into place and tighten up the bolts. And you don't need to go crazy when you tighten those two bolts up because it's just plastic. Um, so um, you can go on ahead and I just give, I just push this a few times just to make sure nothing's binding up to make sure it's uh, normally moving how it normally should. Uh, you can go on ahead and reconnect the connectors again. And then you can go on ahead and swing the uh, alternator back down and to the position it was in and uh, tighten up the bolts. You may find that your alternator needs a little persuasion to get it to go back down where it was, but it's all right. Don't forget to connect the connector in the back. Okay, now that you got the alternator tightened back on, you can go on ahead and get back onto the belt tensioner and uh, reroute the belt back into place. Um, if you did take it all the way off, um, just take your time lining up all the belt with the grooves and everything how it should be. Um, I only took off the alternator portion, so I should be good to go there. And you'll be pushing it down just so you can get the belt to get on. Okay, and just like so, the belt's back on now. Just double checking, make sure everything is looking good. Now the next thing you can do is to go on ahead and reinstall the uh, air box into place. 
Um, it's best to just take this this here giant piece and just stick it straight down into the hole that it came out of. And at the same time, um, you want to the front of the of the intake kind of have it pointed up towards your face a little bit, and then you want to seat the top of the throttle body first, and then kind of push it push the uh, the intake down onto the uh, throttle body. Don't forget to connect your uh, coolant connector on the side. Also, there's a hose up here that comes from the coolant reservoir uh, down to the radiator. This hose goes on top of the intake tube, not underneath. Then you can go ahead and tighten up the uh, eight millimeter bolts for the clamps. And then you can go on ahead and reinstall the engine cover. It just slides onto uh, these two hooks right. Two hooks right here slide onto two hooks you'll see in the back on the top of the motor. And that's all there is to it. Um, if you did have a check engine light uh, before you start the truck, delete it if you have access to a scanner. And then you can go on ahead and start the truck up and um, take it for a drive and see if you're having issues with shifting before this should have solved your shifting issues um, if it doesn't you know feel free to ask me any comments or ask me anything that you need to in the comments section uh, if this is your first time to the channel i appreciate you stopping by if you like the video definitely hit the like button and share it with your friends so i hope that this video helped and uh yeah don't forget to hit the, hit the subscribe button on your way out all right thanks guys